Welcome everyone to another episode of Dermatology X. Our channel is, the purpose of our channel is to help dermatology residents and anyone really interested in dermatology by going through interesting topics by a short video topic summaries. This is a part two of a video series focusing on cutaneous T-cell lymphomas. As alluded to in the first part of this video series, mycosis fungoides is the most common form of cutaneous T-cell lymphoma. It is a potentially fatal skin condition, but has a variable clinical appearance, which may mimic a variety of other benign inflammatory dermatoses, which can make it a diagnostic challenge. In this video today, we'll be going through some of the variants of mycosis fungoides to be aware of and to keep in mind when considering differentials in a patient presenting with a cutaneous finding. So disclaimers, this video is for entertainment purposes only and does not constitute medical advice. This information presented on these slides um, must be taken with a grain of salt. And none of these images in this presentation are mine. They've all been presented from Google Images and from the public domain. Please enjoy this presentation and good luck studying. So in terms of variations of mycosis fungoides, I like to think of it in terms of three broad groups. So firstly, variations in terms of the color, which can be hyperpigmented, hypopigmented or erythrodermic. Then there is variation in terms of potentially its morphology. So the verrucous or hyperkeratotic form of MF, poikilodermatous, ichthyosiform and bullous MF. And then the third group, which in general is quite rare, I think of it as in terms of their distribution on the body. So there's alopecia mucinosa or follicular mucinosis, which is follicle based and often in the head and neck areas. Adnexotropic, including folliculotropic and syringotropic, which is often in the head and neck areas. Pagetoid reticulosis. There's granulomatous sac slack skin form of MF, which often is in flexural areas, such as in the axilla. The omble tumor form of MF, which is often in the vertex, the palmaris et plantaris, as well as the pigmented pupuric dermatoses like forms of MF, both of which are often on the limbs, and palms, and soles. And finally, Caesare syndrome, which is erythrodermic and, and often involves quite a large body surface area. So the following slides will demonstrate some examples of these variants of MF. So the first one here is hyperpigmented MF. As you can see, the patient present with hyperpigmented patches and plaques involving some protected areas as shown here in this image. You can see here hypopigmented mycosis fungoides on uh, hyperpigmented patches on the arm of this gentleman here. As you can see, it can mimic other dermatoses. You know, this can be e easily be mistaken for post-inflammatory hypopigmented changes. For example, uh, pityriasis alba is another differential. So it's important to keep mycosis fungoides in mind when, when um, a patient presents with this type of clinical presentation. Erythrodermic MF, so MF is a key differential when a patient presents with erythroderma, so red scaly rash involving large body surface area. You can get a verrucous form of mycosis fungoides, so hyperkeratotic plaques as seen here in this case presentation. Often there's a significant delay in the diagnosis of MF in these cases, and it may progress 
from Clark stage to become more infiltrative. This is Poikilodermatis mycosis fungoides, quite a rare distinct clinical variant of MF. Its other names include Poikiloderma vasculare atrophicans, or it's been also reported as parapsoriasis variegata as well. So you may come across those alternative labels and names in the literature. Um, Poikilodermatis, of course, referring to um, the atrophy, the telangiectasias, as well as the pigmentary variation. So hyper and hypopigmentation that can be, um, which, which is the three features of poikiloderma. Another ver rare variant of MF includes ichthyosiform MF. Um, cases often present with diffuse erythematous scaling plaques, which, which coalesce, particularly over the abdomen and in the extremities, with ichthyosis like xerosis and scaling, as seen here in this image. Ichthyosis like referring to fish scale like changes, as you can see here. A bullous form of mycosis fungoides, patients present with bulla as seen here, often on an erythematous base. Folliculotropic MF. This is probably the most, one of the more common variants of MF. It can present with plaques, acneiform lesions, or as a tumor, and often involves areas including the eyebrow hair follicles, as well as the scalp. Alopecia mucinosa is another variant which describes the appearance of mucin around hair follicles when seen under the microscope. It often is characterized by bold patches of skin in which hair follicles are, are quite prominent. Um, one secondary cause of alopecia mucinosa is mycosis fungoides. However, you can get alopecia mucinosa without mycosis fungoides as well. So it's important to consider monitoring these cases for follow-up and potential biopsy. Granulometer slack skin variant of MF is a rare and indolent subtype. It mostly affects mainly men between the third and fourth decades and is characterized by hardened and erythematous plaques that affect, that affect predominantly the flexural areas, which then become pedunculated after a number of years. These cases should be followed up quite regularly as it has been reported to develop will be associated with secondary lymphomas, um, including Hodgkin's and non-Hodgkin's lymphomas, as well as my mycosis on fungoides, of course. Pagetoid reticulosis is a rare variant of MF that presents with a large, usually single erythematous and slowly growing scaly plaque containing an intraepidermal proliferation of neoplastic T lymphocytes. You can get PPD like MF, which, which is pigmented papyric dermatoses like MF. As you can see here in these images, like PPD, they tend to affect the extremities. Palmaris et plantaris form of mycosis fungoides is a very rare and localized form of MF. Whilst typically MF affects hands in about 10% of cases, the palmo plantar variant only affects the hands and feet. There's the omble tumor form of MF. This term is used for cases presenting with skin tumors without a uh, preceding phase of patch or plaque phases or stages. 
the necrotic and ulcerative lesions develop spontaneously without evidence of primary preceding symptoms or gradually evolving plaques. Then there's Cesare syndrome. This is a rare leukemic variant of cutaneous T-cell lymphoma defined by the triad of erythroderma, lymph adenopathy, and atypical malignant Cesare cells in the skin, blood, and lymph nodes. It typically presents in patients 55 to 60 years of age and has a male predominance with a ratio of two to one versus females. Thank you for listening to this video presentation. Of course, as always, your comments, feedback, and suggestions are more than welcome. And I look forward to meeting you in the next video of this series. Thank you.